If you're creating a new Spring Boot project or updating an existing one that uses Spring Security, there's something that you need to know. We've deprecated the Web Security Configure Adapter and encourage users to move towards a component-based security configuration. What's up, friends? My name is Dan Vega, and I'm a Spring Developer Advocate with VMware. If you're new around here, one of my passions is teaching, and what I want to do is help you learn the Spring Framework and all of our related projects in the ecosystem through a series of tutorials like the one you're going to watch today. So what we're going to get into, we're going to create a simple project using start.spring.io, one of our favorite places on the internet. And we're just going to create a few REST endpoints, and then we'll talk about security configuration. We'll talk about the old way to do it with the web security configure adapter, and we'll talk about the new way to do it, uh, creating some beans. So what are we waiting for? Let's just get right into it. All right, to get started, we're going to create our project here at start.spring.io. Uh, we're going to be using uh, anything above 2.7. Again, anything above 2.7.x is what is using Spring Framework 5.7. So if you're watching this in the future, anything above this should be the same. So we're going to have a Maven project here using Java 2.7.x. Uh, we're going to call this group dev.danvega. We'll call the artifact a security demo. Um, packaging jar, Java 17, and then the dependencies that we're going to add are we just need Spring Web and we need uh, Spring Security. So those are the two dependencies that we need. We'll go ahead and generate this project and open it up in IntelliJ IDEA. All right, so we've got our project open up in IntelliJ, and the first thing that I want to do is go ahead and set up some endpoints that we can go ahead and use as a basis for testing our application here. So I'm going to create a new Java class here. I'm going to call it Home Controller. This is going to be a REST controller. So we're going to say REST controller. And in here, we're going to create three different endpoints. I'm going to create a root endpoint with a git mapping. So this is just going to return a string. We'll call this home. This will return hello world. And that is fine there. Now we'll have another git mapping uh, called slash user. So this is also going to return a string. We'll call this user. And this is going to return hello user. And last but not least, we'll have a git mapping for uh, admin. So we'll call this slash admin. This will also return a string. We'll call this admin. And this will return uh, hello admin. OK. So these are really our three different endpoints. And what we want to do is we want to set up some security so that when Spring Security is basically added to our project, we are going to open up uh, everything, or we're going to open up our main home method here. So our root context, our root mapping, we want that to open up to anyone. And then what we want to do is we want to lock down this particular path to only users who are authenticated via uh, a user role and then this to be authenticated via the admin role. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to go through kind of what you might have done in the past and what you might be seeing out there in tutorials today. Uh, because I want to show you that that um, still works right now, but the method that we're going to use is deprecated, and we want to move towards something different. But I just want you to be able to see it just in case, in case it comes up. So we're just going to go ahead and create a new. I like to kind of separate this into different packages. I'm going to call this config. Uh, I'm also going to create a new package for my controller. Again, I just kind of like to split this up, um, keep everything kind of separated. So I'm going to create a new Java class here. And we're going to call this security config. Okay, so uh, the first thing that we want to do is go ahead and enable web security. Now, what we would have done in the past is we would have extended the web security configure adapter. It rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? Uh, so we have this class here, and this class has a bunch of uh, different methods in here that we can go ahead and override. This is an abstract class, so we're going to go ahead and override some methods. Uh, so what we want to do here is go ahead and override some methods. One of the methods that we have is configure, which takes in HTTP security. So if we override this method, this gives us the ability uh, to do a couple of things and configure our HTTP security. So you can see we get this HTTP security object. If you want to, go ahead and click through, take a look at that, and understand what that does for you. But what we can do from that now is we can say HTTP, and we can start doing some things, right? Like we want to go ahead and authorize some requests. Uh, one thing I might want to do right off the bat is disable C, uh, uh, CSRF. 
Um, and then I want to authorize some requests. So I can authorize some requests and I can say, hey, um, for ant matchers, I want to go ahead and define a pattern here. So there are different methods here. One of these, this ant matchers will take in um, any number of string patterns, right? So I'm saying here is the root context, which is the git mapping for our home method. Uh, I want to go ahead and permit all. So anybody who gets to that, go ahead and allow it. Uh, but after that, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and make sure that any other request, I want you to make sure that they are authenticated. And so we're going to say, and we're going to use HTTP basic here. Um, and I think that should be it. We can go ahead and return HTTP.build. And actually, I think we should be able to, we don't need to return that uh, from here. So this is what we might have done in the past, right? Uh, then we can get in here and kind of configure this a little bit further. We can say um, our ant matchers for uh, slash user, they should have a role of user. And ant matchers of type admin should have a role of admin. Cool. So this is what we used to have to do. Um, and again, you can see right away here in IntelliJ is telling me, hey, this web security config configure adapter that you're trying to use, it has been deprecated. Uh, so it has been marked um, that you should not be using this. If you click into the source, you can see it here, uh, deprecated. Um, instead of doing that, uh, you should use a security filter chain being to configure HTTP security or your web security. So knowing that, what we can do is we can just go ahead and again, if this is you creating a new application or if this is you uh, upgrading an existing application to 2.7 and Spring, uh, Spring Security 5.7 and above, we can kind of fix this pretty easily. Let's just go ahead and get rid of that. We're no longer overriding uh, that particular class. Uh, but what we want to do now is we want to return that um, security filter chain. So this is going to be security filter chain. And now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and return that. And to do so, we're going to go ahead and build. So that will basically take care of that. You see there's not much different there. Uh, all of this kind of stays in place. Now one thing, one change that I may want to make a change with here is that ever since Spring Security 5.2, we've had this idea of the Lambda DSL. And it, it does a couple of things. Uh, one, it just makes our code a little bit more readable, indentable, concise. Um, I happen to like uh, how it looks, but it also uh, removes the need to go ahead and use these different um, and methods here to kind of chain together all of the things that we're trying to do in our security uh, config here. So I'm going to go ahead and let's just get rid of this for now. So I'm going to say uh, CSRF and what we're going to do is we're going to get our CSRF in here and we're just going to say uh, disable that. We're going to say authorize requests. So we're going to get an auth here. And inside of here, we can now say ant matchers, and we can say permit all. Uh, we can say auth dot ant matchers. Again, user dot has role user. So you could see it's pretty similar as before. Uh, again, I find it just a little bit more readable using the Lambda DSL here. So I'm going to say has role admin. And that's that. And then I can go ahead and set the authentication provider. So what we want to use here is just HTTP basic. And I'm going to go ahead and set the with defaults. And what we can do is go ahead and say uh, build. And we don't need to use that and chain uh, now that we're kind of using the Lambda DSL approach. So I like this. This looks very uh, concise, um, clean and I can clearly see what's going on here. So I like this. Now we need to make this a bean or this is not going to be found. And to do so, we need to make this a configuration class. Now again, you could always do this here in the main class because Spring Boot application at the end of the day 
is a, where is it? Uh, Spring Boot configuration is a configuration class. So that makes it available there. I like to put all my configuration in different configuration classes. Uh, this kind of keeps it separated. So I'm using all of my security configuration here in a class called security config. Now this gets us there. Uh, we're almost there. We've got our uh, configuration set up to say disable CR CSRF. We have, hey, for authorization requests, go ahead and permit all to the home root, and then user and admin have to have those specific roles. Now to do that, we need some usernames or users in the system because we're using HTTP basic, so we need to authenticate with some users. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and set up some users. Now this, uh, again, you've seen this in different tutorials. This is specifically a way for us to go ahead and do this here. This is not something you would want to do in production. We are going to set up some in-memory users. And to do so, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, in-memory uh, user details manager in memory user details manager. That's what we're going to return. We'll call this our user details manager. And what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new user uh, with the default password encoder. Again, that is going to right now say, hey, you should not be using this uh, because it is not safe for production. This is never going to go away. If you see this in the documentation here, this method is considered unsafe for production and is only intended for sample applications. This is a sample application. I've given you a warning. We're OK with it. Let's move on. So I'm going to say go ahead and use the password password. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up some roles for this. Uh, this is going to have a single role of user. And guess what? Go ahead and build that user for me. And let's set up a local variable. Uh, we'll call this uh, user. And then what we're going to do is we're going to copy this. And we're going to paste it. Copy and paste. Love doing that. We're going to say admin. We're going to say admin here. This is going to have an admin role. And with our two users, we should be able to go ahead and return a new in-memory uh, in user details manager. And this actually takes in uh, one or more um, user details. So that's a var args there. We can go ahead and say, I'm going to pass in user and admin. And that should give us our users. So now we should have a user with the role of user and an admin with a role of admin. So what we want to do is we want to fire up this application, see if we can hit root without logging in at all, and then see if we can hit user with logging in with user and hit admin logging in as admin. So let's go ahead and see if this application runs, uh, see if we have any errors. We do not have errors. The demo gods are upon us. First try, that's good to go. Let's go ahead and open up a um, terminal. So I'm going to open up a terminal here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, I, so I'm using a program called HTTP Pi, um, HTTP Pi, uh, just an easier way to curl, less verbose. So all I can say is uh, I can go ahead and say, I want to go ahead and make a, a, a get request to slash 8080. If we go ahead and do that, we get a 200 saying, OK, you can hit that. And we get the hello world back. So let's go ahead and say user. What was our, uh, let's just go back to here. It was slash user and slash admin. So let's try to go to slash user. And of course, we are getting a 401 unauthorized. We are not, we are not authorized to go ahead and hit this endpoint. Um, and that is because we've set that up here in our security config to say, you must be a user. So we need to log in. So to do that, before we hit this, here in HTTP, um, we can go ahead and say dash A, and we're going to send basically an authorization header along with this request. And it's just going to have the username and password. So if I go ahead and send that, we can now hit that. Uh, I'm going to do the same, but I'm going to try and hit admin. But I am a user. I do not have the admin role. And of course, we are forbidden. Uh, we do not have the correct role. So now we are authenticated, but we are not authorized. So things are working. So now if we go ahead and say we are admin and password, 
hello admin, everything is working as it should. So again, this was just to kind of point out the fact that if you are using Spring Boot 2.7, which is using Spring Security 5.7 and above, uh, we are no longer configuring uh, HTTP security or web security by extending that web security configure adapter class. Uh, the way that you want to do this moving forward is to create a bean. To create a bean, we're going to do that here in a configuration class. And um, this bean is going to return a type uh, security filter chain. And again, if you forget this, you don't need to come back to this. Uh, if, you're, if you look in the web security configure adapter docs, you'll see, you know, it says there, it makes the recommendation of what you need to do. And again, uh, I'll go ahead and leave some links in the description below to both a blog post that explains this and one that explains the Lambda DSL in case that is new to you. Again, I'm a big fan of this kind of uh, the Lambda DSL here just because um, it seems a little bit more concise for me and, and I, quite frankly, it just indents better <laughs> in IntelliJ. I don't know if that's the same in every other IDE, but it just seems to, uh, it looks clean for me, so I like it. Thanks for sticking around to the end of this video. I know security can be really confusing and it's really hard as it should be. It's an important part of our application development process. So I know we just touched on a few basic things here today. If you have questions about security and spring security, please leave them below. I'll see if I can make a video on that or at least respond to those questions. Also, I'm gonna leave you a couple links below, one of which is the uh, blog article that talks about the changes here that we went through today as well as an article that goes through the Lambda DSL, if that's something that's new to you. So as always, friends, if you found value in this, please do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button. It really helps me out. Subscribe to the channel. And as always, friends, happy coding.